Six Nations kicking off on a Sunday morning New Zealand time, so there's some actual football we'll go to you know, look forward to this weekend. Should be a pretty exciting tournament. France, no surprises, two dollar fifty favourites to win the thing, and then you got England and Ireland sharing the second line of betting at three seventy five. Uh, England going to be without Owen Farrell for the whole tournament, which is a big loss for them. All right, no Chui Lungi this weekend either. Mm, so, oh yeah, we, we'll get to these this week. Uh, all yeah, right, they're, they're missing a missing a bunch of guys this week. But mm. uh, any of you guys being against France in the outright market? Yes. Okay. Well, they're France, um, so you can. Uh, and I <laughs> like Ireland. Anyone. I like Ireland. Uh-huh. I, I, I love the look of the squad. Uh, uh, Farrell will be there for them. Um, mm-hmm. I just they well they've showed against the All Blacks. Um, they are a very very good side, um, and I think their three home games are again like well they got uh, Wales, Scotland, and Italy. So those are almost, I'm not going to say gimmies, but there's points on the board already. They don't have have to to pick... They have to go to Paris and London. Correct. They only have to pick one win up from there, I think, to win the uh, Six Nations. Um, So I think, once again, get the runs on the board. Um, And I think they will. I think you take Ireland this week and you take the minus as well. I think they'll be way, way too good. Okay. I just really like the look. I really do like the look of the Irish. Mm. Yeah, no, I, it'll be interesting. But uh, for me, I uh, I don't know about you, Richard. Are you Team France or Team Ireland? I uh, Team Ireland as well. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to take. Um, so what are they? Three seventy five. Yeah, yeah, and I'd be happy to take that. And yeah, France at two fifty is pretty pretty yuck. I, I just can't. <laughs> I know they're good, you guys but, they, watch... but they are France. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they've got um, a pretty good halfback, France, but yeah, and yeah. they've got their actual their top first five back who missed all the last Six Nations. They play both England and Ireland at home. Um, I think for me, yeah, it's all about next week. So Ireland and France, both huge favourites this week for home games. Then Ireland go to Paris next week. For Perfect. Perfect. What, what is going to be an awesome game. We'll talk about getting fired up to watch some rugby. Like, um, yeah, they, actually, it's yeah, a pretty good time great. for New Zealand as well. But, yeah, I'll be up with with the coffee watching that one so that that that's one i've got to because i yeah do we'll get on to england's injury woes when we talk about the calcutta cup this week but i think england are going to really struggle without yeah just so, with so many key players missing but um yeah you as we as you said paul at ireland 14 and a half point favorites home to wales this week wales you think england have got a bad injury wise fellatow alan Wynne jones uh who are tapuric Lee Halfpenny all, all out for the whole tournament, I think, if not most of it. Like they've just been absolutely decimated. So you, you, you think Ireland just run all over them in Dublin? I think they do. Yes, I do. Um this this could be a bloodbath, unfortunately, uh, for the Welsh. Um as you say, they're just I don't think they have the depth behind them to be able to um replace those players who are out. There's a whole chunk of experience. Um and uh a whole chunk of, I guess, really, really good rugby players who won't be available for them this season. So um, I just think the Irish, um, who are just going from... Oh, I see them tailing off uh, next season, World Cup season, but I do like the look of them uh, right now. Um, and I, I, yeah, as you say, week two, where they head to Paris to take on the French, um, that'll be a, be a huge game. If they could pick that up, you might as well just hand them the trophy. Yes, if they can win in Paris. Easier said than done. Um, <laughs> As we yeah. found out uh, yeah, the last yeah. year. Just, yeah, wait till Bruno and Intermac and DuPont are like just running absolutely rampant. But are you, you don't mind the 14 and a half point line this week? Because that, that scared you off back in the Irish? A little bit, but I think I'll probably take it. I did see it with those those yeah. names out for Wales. Um, you sort of, we saw in the All Blacks sort of played them played Wales last year and they were missing all those big names. So just sort of, I mean, I think they got a bit closer than it should have been, but we still put a put a number on them. So it's not quite the extent of how many big names out. But yeah, Ireland just I really liked what they saw, uh, what I saw from them in the end of year tour last year. Played great, great um sort of brand of footy, aggressive up front on your face. And um yeah, I'll I'll take the, the minus in that game. Yeah, I it's about where I like I if it was I, think, I think the line's yeah. probably right there. Yeah. Ireland just like while they do play 
or like this you know the line speed is ridiculous they don't run, run in points in the truckloads i'd say so i could see it sort of a really dominant 24 10 win sort of where like wales never look like scoring more than one try but ireland don't exactly put their foot on the throat so yeah but then again i could see them just running all over them in the second half if Ireland do have the right. I think James Lowe's out though, so that's obviously nice, a, but yeah. a minus. But you know they're going to have they're going to they, they'll dominate well. Maybe maybe look at a, I don't know if we've got the market up right now, but one, once totals are up, Wales team under whatever that is because I feel like they might score six points, sort of thing. Because what Wales did win in the past last year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, twenty one sixteen. But but like year before was thirty two nine. Ireland mm. won near four and zero. So, yeah, yeah, interesting. Like they played a lot recently, but only one of those was in the Six Nations because they played two World Cup warm-up games and then in that Autumn Nations Cup. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, we'll move on because I think the match of the rounds actually at Murrayfield later on Sunday morning, five forty-five a.m. kickoff New Zealand time. England, despite all the injuries, were sort of touched on. No, Tuolangi, Courtney Laws, Joe Marchant, Owen Farrell, obviously out for the whole tournament. Joe Marler as well as a under an injury cloud here, but they're still dollar sixty favourites as they head to Murrayfield to take on Scotland, and they've actually only won one of the last four games in the Calcutta Cup series. So, whereas usually this was just you know England didn't even bother bringing the trophy up north with them to maybe hand over. It's been Scotland have had a pretty good time of it against England. Do you have a stronger lean on this game, Paul? Uh, it's certainly there for the taking for the Scots, being at Murrayfield and with an English side uh, down on. Um, their big stars. I, I mean, that midfield of Tui Lungi and Farrell, that's that's a huge loss. I, I, I mean, so they lose all that from there. Does that mean they go with uh, Ben Youngs at halfback um, instead of the exciting young Bristol uh, fella, uh, Randall? Who... Yeah, I think Randall and Smith would be a big risk <laughs> in a full Murray field. Really on the right. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are so I guess I, I guess I Eddie Dennis Jones Slade's had... going to play twelve, which I don't love. So is Slade definitely going to play twelve? That's what it sounds like, but yeah, like who knows? Not Atkinson. You... Yeah, like that's who's sort that's... of a he's in the, the Tui Lungi mold. Maybe now with Marshawn being ruled out as well, they'll they'll go with Atkinson. But yeah, like I yeah, I do think that the the midfield is going to be the real area of concern because Scotland do have a lot of talent in the backs, and they'll target that area, and especially defensively if it's a new combination. And Marcus Smith, obviously, incredibly exciting talent. You know, he's not already severe defensively in the ten channel there, so he's another like he gives you, it gives you a pretty decent area to to uh, target there if you are Scotland. Are you got are you leaning one way or another here, Richard? I'd probably go with Scotland. I think mm. yeah, they just they've obviously had a bit of them recently, and they had a pretty good end of year se- um, season. You know, they beat Australia and sort of unlike oh, weren't unlucky, but they you know put up a good fight against South Africa and all that. So um, and then they beat Japan. So definitely they've done sort of enough for me to think with England with all those outs. I think that um, at Murrayfield, happy to take the plus in that one. What is what is the one? Uh, it's only two and a half. Oh, two but, and yeah. half. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, but I'll back that. I think that they'll, um, with England with those outs, I think it'll just be a bit much for them. Mm. And uh, never an easy task. Mind you, I could see them winning by 20. So. You taking the underdogs as well, Paul? Yeah, I am. Oh. Um, I'm taking them uh, plus the points. I think uh, them getting, uh, what is it, two and a half points at home. Uh, I'm very, very happy to jump on that. Uh, I can see them coming away with the victory, but I just like that little bit of uh, insurance as well. So Scotland plus two and a half at a dollar ninety two, I do like. Right. Yeah, I'm. I might just go the other way. I think here, yeah, don't have a strong line, but I must think it might be a good thing. Not like obviously you don't want to have guys injured, but just to have Marcus Smith and Freddie Stewart are two of the most exciting young talents in world football. Could just have it like almost being forced to get like give them a bit extra. Could go one by the um, other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, extra of a role early on whereas like they might have played it a bit more conservatively and just played the usual english game where you kick for the corners if this does turn into a bit of a shootout which i think scotland will want it to because their strength is in the back line i do like yeah you the, the talent england have in the backs as well could could work out all right and yeah i, I just think later on up front england certainly have the better depth than the forwards so uh, if it if it is close they should be able to roll over the top of them later on so yeah i'll take the minus two and a half and it's yeah that that 
three is a key number though so wouldn't want a, a plus three and a half and again it is traditionally pretty close yeah, yeah. so yeah, I'll, I'll take minus two it's... and a half but yeah um we won't go into it too in depth because it's italy and they don't play competitive games but my bet of the week is just take france minus 35 and a half in the last game because italy we, you think the waratahs are bad defensively watch italy play <laughs> I, I took it to the uh, All Blacks for 20 minutes in last year. Yeah, uh, nah, I think you're right there. Yeah.